Hello, can you hear me? Anyone? Okay, uh, thanks. Okay, uh, now uh, can you see my screen? Also hear my voice? And anyone can give me a response? Okay, uh, thanks. Okay, let's continue our tutorial. Uh, this week, we will going to introduce the interprocess communication, which means uh, for your C programming, when you want to uh, concurrently running two processes, you need to handle the intercommunication between the two processes. So here, as for this week, uh, our tutorial will talk about the interprocess communication. So here, uh, this is a very simple example. Uh, we can see that if we want to run the Linux command, like the list, like the ls uh, hyphen l, which means uh, we want to list all the possible directories and uh, files under the current uh, uh, location, uh, we could uh, type the ls hyphen l through the terminal and uh, the enter the then uh, press the enter, then you will find out uh, all the possible uh, files and directories under the current uh, location. And here, uh, the, the vertical bar here called the pipe, which means uh, the, the, the result uh, generated by the previous one will be delivered uh, to the following one. So here, as for showing this example, the ls hyphen l uh, print out such uh, result, and the uh, word count means uh, calculate or to say collect all the lines uh, for the input. So as for the input for the uh, wc, it is uh, uh, it is such content. So the word count will calculate how many lines existed at uh, the current content. So which means the input of the uh, WC is the output of the ls hyphen l. So basically through the pipe, uh, you could de deliver the data from one process to another. And here for ls hyphen l and uh, WC hyphen l, such two command, uh, if we want to execute the two command concurrently, the pipe is a very efficient way, or to say a very uh, useful way for us to deliver such data. So basically uh, what we need to do as for this tutorial, uh, as well as for our assignment one, is about achieving the uh, inter-process communication by the pipe interface uh, using the C programming. So firstly, we need to uh, uh, understand several uh, aspects about the implementation, like uh, file descriptors, the redirection, and uh, how to launch a new program in the same process, and also the communication between the parent and the child process through pipe. So, firstly, as for the background, as we mentioned about, uh, as we mentioned above, the ls hyphen l uh, pipe wcl means. Uh, uh, counts how many lines from the output of the Earth have an error uh, as for the WC has an error. So as for uh, implement this in a shell pro uh, program, I can give you a, a bird view or to say a general view uh, for uh, implementing such a program. Uh, basically first we need to uh, firstly, generate two processes to execute the LSFNL and the 
WC hyphen L respectively. And here, as for our implementation, we could use the execute VP interface, which is a, a, a available interface provided by the C programming. We can directly invoke such an interface to conduct such a functionality. And then after we have created two processes, we use the pipe for the inter-processes communication, which means if we want to deliver the output of the RS hyphen L to the uh, w, uh, WC hyphen L, uh, we can use the pipe interface to deliver the data through the two processes. And then the dump is an uh, accelerate uh, uh, or to say uh, uh, a way to help us to uh, use the pipe. Like the, the dump interface is used to implement the redirection. Uh, here, the, S, uh, the standard output of the process of, uh, for executing LS L is redirected to the uh, right end of the pipe. The standard uh, input of the process for executing WC L is redirected to the, to the reader end of the pipe. Here it is a, a kind of a complicated, a complicated to understand. I will later give you a detailed example to illustrate such a process. So basically for uh, this tutorial as well as uh, our assignment one, uh, the general approach or say the general procedure to conduct our program is uh, about such three steps. And then, firstly, uh, let's have a uh, let's have a basic understand a, a basic uh, study for the uh, file descriptor. So basically, the file de descriptor is generated uh, when a new process is created, and by default, three files maps to a console device related to the standard input, standard output, and the standard error will be opened, occupying the first three file descriptors. And uh, here I can give you a simple illustration here. Oh, why it disappear? Okay, uh, here I can give you a simple illustration about the file descriptor. For the time we have, when we have created a process, which means uh, uh, a current function is running uh, in our program, like uh, the new process, when it is created by default, uh, such uh, the environment will generate uh, three file descriptors for the current process. Basically, uh, each one is allocated with a file descriptor like an uh, in integer called the zero, one, and two. Well, the, the zero uh, means the standard input. And also the standard input means the keyboard. Or to say, when you type some data, well, when you type some data through the keyboard, such data will be delivered through such a file descriptor to the computer. Then the computer could uh, process the data you have typed in. So this is a very basic uh, file descriptor that could be used for us to input some data to the computer. And then the file descriptor one means the standard output uh, means generally uh, all the uh, data or to say all the output of the uh, computer programming will be generated through the terminal. Like uh, uh, when we invoke the, when we invoke a, a terminal and then we type some command, such command is received by the keyboard and through the, S, the, through the standard input to the file descriptor zero. And then uh, the com computer uh, process such a command and then generate the re result through the file, uh, file descriptor one, uh, or to say the standard output to the terminal. So we can see the output through the screen. 
So basically, such two uh, file descriptor uh, is uh, are generated by default. Or to say, uh, even you would not create such uh, file descriptor, it will be generated automatically. And also, the standard error means some uh, uh, some abnormal events, and basically we we could. Uh, uh, neglect it because for most uh, for uh, almost all cases we will not care about that. So basically, such three uh, file descriptor is very uh, critical and uh, important for process to have the data communication. So basically, our uh, implementation will uh, be implemented through such uh, uh, file descriptor. So it is very important. So please. Uh, have a deep understanding about this file descriptor. And then after that, uh, after we have a general understanding about the, the, the file descriptor, there is a simple illustration, uh, a simple example. Here, like uh, we open the my file, then it could generate a file descriptor. And uh, then we could uh, print out the file descriptor of the uh, customer defined uh, file descriptor. And also if here, if we invoke the read interface through the file descriptor of zero, which means here zero is the standard input or to say the keyboard, right? So every uh, data typed through the keyboard will be collected and uh, read out to the buffer. So here, the zero means the keyboard. And also for the write interface, uh, we use the file de descriptor of a one, which means the standard output, or to say the terminal. So basically, if we want to write the data from the buffer to the target, so here we have not uh, write the that data from buffer to the to the uh, to a specific file it is right uh, right out to the uh, terminal so basically this is the way we used to uh, uh, to generate or to deliver some data through the file descriptor and we can guess that the fd it is uh, at least uh, 3 because 0 1 and 2 are already allocated right so basically the fd is at least three. So this is uh, the example to illustrate uh, the usage of, of file descriptor. So there is a simple summary about our result. I have uh, discussed uh, about uh, how to describe such a result uh, with the example. So here first, uh, for the file descriptor of the fi uh, my file, it is uh, perhaps three. And uh, for the read with descriptor zero, we go to the keyboard input on the console. And also for the write with file descriptor zero, uh, one, it will go to the terminal screen. So this is a general result about our previous example. So after uh, after we have a clear understanding about the file descriptor, we will talk about the redirection. The redirection is also very critical for the uh, inter-processes communication. So basically the, the uh, redirection is implemented by the dump. The dump is a system call uh, that creates a copy of the file descriptor, old file descriptor using the lowest number unused file descriptor for the new descriptor. On success, the system call return the new descriptor. On error, uh, minus one is returned, or, and the error is set appropriately. So basically, the dump is used for what? I can uh, give you another example, just like uh, the example we have discussed before. Here we have a, a gen, uh, a, generated the file descriptor by default, like the 0, 1, 2. And the suppose we have created a, a file descriptor by open a file. So the file disc, uh, descriptor for the opened file is uh, 
three. Uh, we suppose it is uh, three. And uh, uh, if we use the dump, if we use the dump for FD, currently it will return no result, or to say it will return minus one, because the lowest number, the lowest number unused phi descriptor uh, is now. Or to say there is, uh, uh, all of the previous phi descriptor have been occupied. So basically uh, it will return nothing. It, will, uh, it could not achieve our demand. So basically, if we first close the descriptor for the phi descriptor one or zero, uh, so here we we suppose we assume that the phi descriptor pointed to the phi, uh, to the one is closed by such a interface like we close one. Then we we dump FD. The the after that, the phi descriptor means one, okay? Because firstly, we close it. It means uh, the phi descriptor one is empty now. And then we dump the phi, de phi descriptor of FD to the lowest number unused phi descriptor. So the lowest uh, number unused phi descriptor now is uh, one. So basically after uh, invoke such two interface, we could uh, reallocate the phi descriptor for FD as one. So basically uh, dump is used to uh, for do this. And based on that, we could uh, uh, dynamically uh, change the phi descriptor for the uh, gi given phi or to say a given pointer. And then based on that, we could uh, uh, change uh, the phi descriptor on demand. Okay, after that, this is, uh, this is another example to illustrate the previous uh, example. Like here, we first uh, open the file and uh, give the file descriptor to such a pointer, and then we close one, just uh, as the example I, sh I showed be before. So here, we close standard out. So the one become unused, and then we dump FD. The uh, uh, duplicated uh, uh, FD to the lowest number unused file, which is one, just as uh, the previous uh, slide showed. And then we close FD or, or whatever. So this example shows the, the, the way to use the dump. And uh, all of the, the, these examples, uh, as well as the previous one, is provided uh, by the uh, uh, through the blackboard. You could uh, uh, download all the test cases and uh, test it by your own. So basically, here I just show you the conclusion. So uh, after that, uh, after we have uh, the file descriptor and uh, know something about the radiation, then we will talk about launch a new program in the same group progress. The basic idea of the, it is uh, like, uh, firstly, we have uh, the mean function, all right? Uh, like we have, the mean, we have the mean function in the current environment. And here, we want to invoke another process. It is not uh, like another uh, function because for the function, the current process could be blocked. But uh, here we are talking about launch a new program, which means here, like uh, it is like a dot C file, and here it is a B dot C file. There are two different programs. Okay, so suppose the A dot file, uh, A dot C file, want to evoke uh, the process of the B dot C. Here, this is a general idea, like uh, how the A dot C file invokes the B dot C file. This is called launch a new program in the same process because for the in the CPU's view, the CPU will always uh, handle one task or to say one program uh, when we use the C programming, right? So basically for, for this moment, the CPU just uh, uh, process the A.C file, but here we want to invoke uh, another B.C file. 
we need to use some way to launch a new program in the same progress. Just to use such progress to also handle the issue happened in the build C5. Okay, then we, we, uh, we are going to talk about some details. This is the interface that we use to invoke a new, uh, a new uh, program in the same process. Like it is, uh, uh, it is uh, from the execute family uh, where the execute family is the system call, which provides a facility for overlaying the calling process in the new executable module. And also the new program is loaded into the same progress space. And if, if successful, the execute will never return, which is, uh, which is very important. Uh, you, you guys need to remember that because for our assignment one, we need to handle such an issue by close or open some file descriptor dynamically. So basically uh, they are because uh, once, uh, once our uh, execute uh, uh, invocation is successful, the execute never returns. So we need to handle such a, a problem. So basically, uh, different from the execute, the execute VP is one variation of execute. Here, the V represents the v vector, which means once we want to uh, input the parameter for the execute VP, we could use the vector to uh, deliver the parameter. And also for the P, it is the passive, uh, pa passive environment variable, uh, which means once we want to execute, uh, once we want to invoke the, the execute, we could use the P uh, to find the file passed as an argument to be loaded into the process. So different from the uh, execute, the execute VP could uh, uh, understand the file uh, the the file pointer, and also know all its uh, parameters by the uh, uh, by the vector. So here is uh, the simple example for using the uh, execute VP. Suppose here we have a program called the hello.c. And in the, uh, within the hello dot we only need to print out we are we are in and uh, the the process ID of the hello dot c, and then and then there is another program called the example dot c, and as uh, for the example dot c, uh, it uh, first print out the process ID of itself, and then use the execute VP to invoke the hello dot, dot C, which means here uh, uh, when the uh, when the process run, runs to this position, such a progress will be redirected to this process. Okay, so here uh, after the uh, example dot C print out the PID of uh, itself, it will uh, execute the code in the hello dot C. So uh, here, uh, e even though our process is for the example for C, uh, example dot C, here we will print out we are in hello dot C and also the process idea for the hello dot C. And uh, very or it is very important that uh, uh, up to here, such a program will not be executed. Remember that because we uh, previously we have uh, uh, introduced that once the execute VP is successful, the current process will not, uh, the current process of the example dot C will be blocked and uh, it will not return to the current environment uh, only after we have uh, invoked it to do so. So basically uh, as for our implementation, we need to uh, care about that because as shown there, the logic here is quite clear. We invoke and then we get back, but basically, it would not get back. We need to use our way to let it get back.
so uh, there's the conclusion about our previous uh, uh, example, like the process of the the previous uh, hello.c file could be print out, but the printf after the execute VP is not executed because executed uh, because execute VP never returns if successful uh, if successful. This is very important. You need uh, you need to take care of uh, of that. And then after we have uh, the basic knowledge about the uh, execute, which means we invoke some new process for the current process. Uh, by using the execute VP, we can execute LS hyphen L in the parent process and WC hyphen L in the child process, which means as for our previous example here, suppose there is a process and in the process we have run the LS hyphen L, but we want to uh, let the output of the LS hyphen L as the input for another process. So here, uh, suppose there is a, a, another another uh, process uh, which runs the WC gun L uh, hyphen L. So basically here we use the execute VP to redirect our process to the uh, another position. And also here we can use the execute VP to target to this position. So after the current process have, uh, have run the LS hyphen L, the program will be, be redirected to this environment and run the WC hyphen L. So this is a basic idea about the execute VP and where we need the execute VP to uh, conduct our implementation. So finally, we need to make the communication through the pipe because Previously, we have seen that uh, now we could handle the uh, two process or to say invoke a new process through the old process by the uh, execute VP. But actually, if we want to deliver the data from the, uh, the current process to the following, press, uh, following process, we could not handle it yet, right? Because uh, like here, we have run the LS hyphen L the output of it, we want we want the output of the LS hyphen be delivered into the uh, be de delivered into here. So the uh, then uh, such a process could uh, uh, conduct the WC hyphen based on the input of the LS hyphen This is what we want to do, right? So basically, we also need another interface or to say another approach to deliver the data from different uh, processes. So here the pipe is used to do that. So this is the brief description of the pipe. And basically pipe looks like this. It only need an input of the uh, pipe by descriptor. And also the pipe creates a pipe just like the vertical bar we have discussed before. It works well uh, in the terminal and uh, the pipe it, here is just another version for the vertical bar in the C programming environment. So it creates a pipe uh, uh, which is a unidirectional data channel that can be used for inter-processes communication. And the pipe has a, re a read end and a uh, write end. And the data written to the right end uh, of the pipe can be read from the right end of the pipe. Basically, it is a pipe. Okay, so here is a, uh, suppose there is a right end, there is a right end. Uh, it means uh, we, uh, our current process, uh, after we have evoked the, the pipe, we could read data from here and write data from here. This is just a pipe. Uh, it holds the same uh, de definition as we have learned from data from the data structure. It is just a pipe. Uh, then the data written to the right end of the pipe is buffered by the kernel until it is uh, read from the uh, end of, from the pipe. And then I can directly give you the example of the pipe. So here, 
this is the general idea of the pipe. So suppose we have a, uh, invoke the pipe in the parent process. Okay, here we define the current process is parent. And the pipe is looks like this. It is a, a buffer, a buffered zone in the kernel, which means it is uh, uh, in memory or to say uh, uh, a buffer. Only after we have a, a conduct or to say finish the process or to say uh, whenever we want to read, read or, uh, or uh, write or read data from this pipe, can the data from the buffer be uh, removed? So basically, when a parent process use pipe to create a pipe, the generate file descriptor here, the pipe file descriptor zero will point to the uh, read end of the pipe. And the FD1 will point to the right end of the pipe. So it looks like this. Because we have uh, 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 discussed before, because the file descriptor 0, 1, and 2 have already been uh, created uh, for some position. So here, after we have invoked the pipe, the current process will generate an, another two uh, file descriptor called the uh, pipe FD zero and pipe FD one. The pipe FD the the, uh, the pipe FD zero targets to the read end of the pipe, and the pipe FD one targets to the read end of the pipe. Which means, if we want to read data from the buffer zone, we use the uh, descriptor three. If we want to write out data to the pipe, we use the descriptor four. Is that clear? So based on such two newly generated file descriptor, we could make the data communication between the current process and the pipe zone. So this gave us the opportunity to uh, have the communication between the uh, between several process. So then I can give you another example right here. When the parent process use fork to, to create a child process, the child process inherits all the properties of its parent process when it is created, which means previously we have defined the parent process and the such environment is generated for the parent process. And then we use a fork, which means create a, create a new process uh, within current environment. So another environment will be copied uh, to, uh, for the child process, which is just the same as the parent process. So we can see that for both parent and child process, uh, all of them hold the zero, one, two, uh, three, four, such five, five descriptors. And uh, here, uh, now we are clear about what we want to do. Like uh, we want to do something like this. Right, like we want to deliver the data generated by this way to the process. And then the process could uh, calculate or to say process uh, the data by such command and uh, generate some new data, right? This is what we want to do. So basically the key point is that we need to deliver the data from, the from, from this process to this process, right? So basically I can give you a, a example like how to achieve that. So uh, uh, just as I introduced before, both the parent and the child hold the same environment. Uh, so for the child, it also holds the pipe FD0 and pipe FD1. It, uh, it is used uh, as the same way just as the parent process. So here is the example, like, uh, like, uh, sorry about that. Like we want to do this, all right. And here, this process is is used to do do this, and this process is used to do this. What we want to do is deliver the output of this, right, to the uh, as the input for it. Is that clear? So basically, I can give you the 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 the, the procedure. 
like uh, first we could close the standard output. Can you remember uh, uh, what is used for of the standard output? It is about the terminal, right? So we close the point, uh, the file descriptor to the terminal, and then we use the dump. Uh, can you uh, still remember the dump is used to allocate the file descriptor, the current file descriptor with a new file descriptor. So here we uh, dump the pipe FD1. So the pipe FD1 will be replaced uh, by one, right? And then we close the file descriptor of uh, pipe FD0 and pipe FD1 uh, because as we mentioned before, if we do not handle such a problem, the current process will always be uh, blocked. Or to say, only after that, we could make the data deliver through the two processes smoothly. So basically it is kind of a regulation or to say the restriction. And based on that, we could deliver the data. First, we could deliver the data from the parent to write uh, the right end of the pipe. Right, and then we conduct the same approach to the child process. So basically we close the file descriptor uh, zero, and then we reallocate by dump uh, for the pipe FD zero. And then the pipe FD zero targets to the reader end of the pipe. And then we also close the two pipe FD. And after that, we can see that the two process are communi uh, could communicate with each other because they are in they are interconnected by the by by our um, manipulation. Uh, like we define the file descriptor one of the parent targets to the right end of the pipe, which means the parent could write out data uh, to the end of the pipe, and also we redirect the file descriptor zero of the child to the read end of the pipe, which means the child process could read out data from the pipe. And based on that, the data, the output of the LS hyphen L could be delivered through the pipe to the WC hyphen L. So this is a basic idea about how to achieve the inter-process communication. So the, uh, this is the code of, about the implementation just uh, as I, I show you before, like we first close the file character one for the parent, and then we dump the pipe FD one and also close the two pipe FD and then evoke. And after that for the child, we first close zero and also dump and close the pipe FD and execute VP. And after that, such a pipe uh, could uh, deliver data and we have achieved our goal. Uh, such an example is also provided uh, through the Blackboard. You could uh, download and uh, find what happened and run it by yourself. And here I think there is a, a small quiz, like if we remove the code in the two boxes, like we not close the pipe FD, what will happen? Because we have mentioned before, right? We must uh, uh, close that because, like, firstly, when a process read the read the pipe, it will harm until all rights, all right, file descriptor for the pipe are cl closed. So therefore, the process that read from the pipe will harm if we remove the code of the two boxes. Or to say, every time we use the pipe, or to say we, we use the execute VP through the two process, we need to consider about the, the file descriptor and properly open or close the current file descriptor. And only after that, we could deliver the data through a different process smoothly. So I think this is the main contents about this tutorial. And uh, finally, uh, we also have a pro uh, exercise about our, our this tutorial. Uh, the deadline is uh, just as usual, the next week, Thursday. And as for such an exercise, we need to implement such 
a pipe. It is a two two uh. It, it is a two pipe. Like the in the the output of uh, LS has an air will be firstly delivered to the grip D, and uh, then the output of the grip D will be delivered to the uh, WC hyphen C. This is a two pipe. So we uh what we need to do is. Uh, implement such a two pipe based on the idea of the one pipe it is just the same okay because the children will uh, could also be act as the parent and also the parent could uh, also be act as the children so the role of them could be converted and then please be reminded that you only need to submit the lab three uh, as a, uh, exercise or to say your c code and uh, I want to uh, remind you that uh, as for this uh, tutorial, I think it is quite important for your assignment one, because basically uh, if you have read the requirements of, uh, about the assignment one, you could understand uh, our assignment one is only do the same thing as we just uh, discussed as for this tutorial. So basically if you have a great understanding about the uh, contents of uh, our uh, th uh, of this tutorial, you could uh, implement your code or to say finish your assignment once mostly. So uh, please pay attention to this uh, uh, tutorial. And uh, also if you have uh, any question about the implementation uh, or to say some ideas, uh, you could first uh, uh, go through the slide and find out what happened uh, through the procedure and then uh, if you still have some problem, you could just contact me uh, through the email. So uh, are there any questions or to say, if you have question and want to uh, uh, chat with me, you could just use the chat, chat box by the Zoom.
Okay, I think time's up. You guys could uh, leave. Please feel free to leave. Okay, bye bye. Oh, I